Hello friends, I welcome you all to this session. Today in this lecture, we will try to learn about the reverted gear train. Now, rever reverted gear train is a type of compound gear train. Compound gear train. Now, as we have seen in our previous classes, there are two types of uh, gear train. Number one is simple gear train. Number two is compound gear train. This reverted gear train is just a modification of compound gear train. Now, how can we say that that this particular gear train is a type of compound gear train? A simple explanation to that is, or let us look at this particular shaft B. This is my shaft B. On this shaft B, there are two gears mounted: gear number two and gear number three. Now, any gear is said to be compound gear train. Then on one of the shaft axis, there has to be more than one gear mounted. And as we can see on shaft B, there are two gears are mounted. Hence, we can surely say that this is a type of compound gear train. Now, why a new name reverted gear train is given to this kind of gear train arrangement or gear arrangement? A simple explanation to that is, let us look at over here, this gear number one, this gear number one. This gear number one is my main driver and gear number four is my main driven. And gear number one is mounted on axis A and gear number four is mounted on axis C. As axis A and C are collinear with each other, hence this is a type of reverted gear, tra gear train which is just a modification of a compound gear train. Now, where we can use this kind of gear, gear train? A simple answer to that is, we will use this kind of gear, gear train where we require the input shaft and output shaft collinear with each other. That means the axis has to be coincide with each other, right? So, a simple example to this is a watch. In case of our geared watch, the different different types of hands, example is second hand, then minute hand, then hour hand, all these hands, they are just collinear with each other, alright? So in this kind of application, we use this kind of reverted gear, gear train, alright? Now as we know, in case of compound gear train, in case of compound gear train, the intermediate shafts, play their role in deciding velocity ratio. So let us prove it again whether it is correct in this case or not. Alright, now I will assume that my gear number 1 has T1 number of teeth, gear number 2 has T2, gear number 3 has T3 and gear number 4 has T4 number of teeth. Alright, now as gear number 2 and gear number 3 both are mounted on same shaft, hence we can surely say that omega 2 is equal to omega 3 because they are mounted on same shaft. So, rotational angular velocity is same for both of them. Alright, now we will uh, see uh, one meshing gear at a time. That means as gear number 1 and gear number 2 are in meshing with each other and gear number 4 and gear number 3 are in meshing with each other. So I will write down as gear number 1 and gear number 2 are in meshing with each other. In case of gear number 1 and 2, 1 is my driver and 2 is my driven gear. So I can surely write down this relationship from law of gearing that omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to T2 by T1. From law of gearing, we know that angular velocity is in inversely proportional to the number of teeth and in direct proportion with the pitch circle diameter or pitch circle radius. Alright? So, this is we know from our law of gearing. Alright? Uh, maybe it is inversely proportional. Yeah, it is inversely proportional. Alright? So, we know this thing from our law of gearing. Right, so we got this relation from law of gearing between gear number one and two. Okay, now between gear number three and gear number four, as gear number three is driving the gear number four, so three is driver and four is driven. So I can surely write down this as omega three by omega four is equal to T 
टी फोर बाय टी थ्री ऑल राइट ओके ना वॉट आई विल डू आई विल मल्टीप्लाई लेफ्ट हैंड साइड एंड राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ बोथ द इक्वेशन सो वॉट एक्चुअली आई विल गेट इज ओमेगा वन अपॉन ओमेगा टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय ओमेगा थ्री अपॉन ओमेगा फोर इज इक्वल टू टी टू बाय टी वन मल्टीप्लाई बाय टी फोर बाय टी थ्री सो एज वी नो दैट एंगुलर वेलोसिटी ऑफ गियर टू एंड थ्री आर इक्वल so they both will just cancel each other out and the equation we will get over here is omega 1 upon omega 4 is equal to t2 into t4 upon in denominator we will get t1 into t3 okay so we got this relationship this relationship is very important uh, while deciding the angular velocity ratio now as we know that intermediate gears 2 and 3 have played their part in deciding the velocity ratio hence this is an example of compound gear train now let us try to understand the peculiar characteristic of this particular gear i will assume i will assume that pitch circle radius of gear a is r a now what is pitch circle radius pitch circle radius is suppose this is my outer pitch circle and this is my center so pitch circle radius is distance between axis of rotation distance between axis of rotation and the pitch circle axis of rotation and pitch circle so i will assume that this is particular distance is r1 okay similarly over here it is r2 okay this is pitch circle radius of gear 2 similarly in this case this particular is my r3 and this particular is my r4 all right i hope you are getting all right now we can surely write down one relationship the relationship is the distance between axis of gear a and b and distance between axis of gear c and b are equal so i can surely write down a relationship that r1 plus r2 is equal to r4 plus r3 okay so this is a relationship which will get satisfy in case of only reverted gear train okay now we know that we know that module of a gear module of a gear is equal to pitch circle diameter upon number of teeth all right so in this equation i want to convert pitch circle radius into pitch circle diameter so what i will do i will multiply both the side with number 2 okay multiplying both the side with number 2 so my equation will get converted into d1 plus d2 is equal to d4 plus d3 okay now i will substitute this equation this particular relationship in this equation now one thing we need to know that when two gears are in meshing with each other when two gear mesh with each other then their module has to be same their module has to be same that means in case of gear 1 and gear 2 which are in meshing with each other so module of gear 1 has to be equal to module of gear 2 i will give this as a new name as m p suppose mp and as gear number 3 and gear number 4 gear number 3 and gear number 4 are in meshing with each other so i will write down m3 equal to m4 is equal to m q all right now one thing uh, to be noted over here is it is not likely to be uh, required thing that gear number 2 and gear number 3 has same module a simple answer to that is gear number 2 and 3 are not in meshing with each other it is possible that gear number 2 and gear number 3 do not have same module okay now we will substitute these values in our relationship so what we will get is Uh, in case of d1 i will write down this as t1 multiply by mp okay because module of gear 1 is p plus t2 multiply by what is module of gear 2 module of gear 2 is again mp 
it is equal to t4 multiply by what is module of gear 4 it is m q plus t3 into m q okay this is a relationship we got all right now what i will do from left hand side i will take mp common and from right hand side i will take mq common so eventually i will end up with mp into t1 plus t2 is equal to i will take mq common mq into t4 plus t3 all right cool so this is relationship we got so if we know the number of teeth on any three gear and if we know module of all the gear we can surely find out the number of teeth of any unknown gear so this is a relationship we use while designing the gear all right now let us talk about one special case a special case arise over here is suppose mp is equal to mq that means module of all the gears are same so this equation mp and mq will get cancel out from each side and what we will end up with is t1 plus t2 is equal to t4 plus t3 okay so this is the relationship we will get if this particular special case get satisfy okay but this is very very special case it is not possible it is not always possible not always possible this is a very very special case it satisfy only in special condition the special condition is module of all the gears are same okay so this is the working of riveted gear train this is the design of the riveted gear train and surely this relationship proves that this is a modification of compound gear train okay so i hope you got this lecture thank you